Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How are you today, my friend? I am so glad to be here. I'm so glad you're there. And I always really believe we have new viewers. And if that's the case today, I have no doubt, please stay with us. Don't let it be your last time to visit Home Keepers. And never, ever do I want to forget you regular special people we love so much. You're the ones who keep us going, and we thank you for that so much. We try to cover everything that affects the home, and that is everything. And there's something affecting the American home today that is front and center in the news. And we have a gentleman here who really is an authority on the subject, and that's the drug problem. And I think a lot of parents, uh, please don't think I'm being disrespectful, are clueless. And uh, the children, the young people, are certainly ignorant as to what these drugs do to them. But this gentleman knows. His name is Travis Waters. And his book is called West Coast Kid, My Redemption. And there's a picture on the front here with a bunch of little, I think it's a bunch of little Sunday school kids. Uh, he was on Fox recently as an expert talking about the drug situation. We have situations now where states are legalizing drugs used to were illegal. We have a president that kind of gave it, it's not a big deal. And uh, this gentleman smoked his first marijuana at the age of 14, graduated to the heavy stuff, you know. He became a major, get this, a major drug smuggler and uh, went to prison. I mean, he knows the whole gamut. And that's why I'm glad he's here. He's going to be uh, educating us today, and we're fortunate to have him. I'm going to join Stephanie, and uh, we're fixing one of those good casserole things you can take to the church supper, and everybody will say, what a great recipe. It's called a baked potato casserole or something like that. Potato casserole, I'll get it straight when I get over there. But before I do, I want to tell you again, if you watched the program just a few days ago, we talked about this new product called uh, the ozonated olive oil. That's where the oxygen is somehow put into the olive oil, makes it very healing. Now, the reason I want to tell you this, last night I was, last night I was sitting on my couch watching a little TV and this arm just began to irritate me and I was scratching. I looked at it and I had a, a patch about that big of uh, eczema. That's what it looked like, I think. It was red, it was flaky, it was irritating. And so I had this in my house and I kept, I even kept time. I looked at the clock, it was quarter of 10 and I start, I'd show it to you, but there's nothing there now. But I just started really working that into that eczema. I'm sure that's what it was. And um, kept it up, went to sleep, woke up at four. I usually woke up in the middle of the night and then go back to sleep. I did. I checked it at four o'clock in the morning, friends, it was just gone from this. <laughs> Every household needs this uh, for, for skin problems and so forth. And so um, I'm going to offer it to you again. Please pay attention to the telephone number on the screen because that's not our number. It's very important that you use the number that you see on the screen for only $22.95. As I said, every single household should have it. And I hope you will take advantage of it. That includes the shipping. And if you saw that program, which actually was just a few days ago with Dr. Young, um, I'm sure that this will kind of uh, jog your memory and maybe you intended to order it, but then you didn't. So now's your opportunity because I want to give my story. What do you think of my story? I love your story. I know it. I was showing to Wanda, but there's nothing there. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not going gonna, I'm not gonna to waste time with that. But I was just uh, kind of speechless over things. So I thought, well, tell the people about it again. Yes. What are we going to do here? Uh, we're doing a baked potato casserole. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here's what's great about this. You can make a big batch of mashed potatoes. You can have regular mashed potatoes one night, put mm -hmm. the rest away. The next night or the night after that, you can make this something different, and you're, you're already ahead of the game. You already have something made. So just boil up a bunch of them. Yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you, you're doing your job, right? Mm -hmm. I have eight medium potatoes here that we've um, cubed and we've boiled. So they're tender. Uh -huh, they're tender. I have a cup of evaporated milk, and I have a half a, a cup of, of light sour cream. I already like the yummy. And the ingredients: salt and pepper. Get this out of the way. Yeah. I'm just gonna mm. um, mix this up. 
Like I said, this is one of those for those church suppers. Yes, you'll be. Uh, I like those, will you know, you. where the women all try to outdo each other. Yeah, lots of food. It's such an insult to take your dish home and there's still, and there's stuff still in food it. in it. <laughs> like what? No. <laughs> You know, I had my fourth grandbaby a couple weeks ago, and I still I haven't know. gotten to hold him. Well, she got sick. Crazy. I got so yeah. sick, and I didn't want to be around him. So. I got a I got a letter about this girl, and they love the way you just tell your life. Oh well, and it's so exciting. Everyone should know about. <laughs> well, it's really good. She met her husband in a bar, and and uh, they got married, but weren't going to make it. And then Jesus came into mm -hmm, their life mm -hmm. and changed everything, and. I'm telling you, it, is, it has really been a journey. Yes. Okay, so I have um, a cup of shredded cheddar. Mm -hmm. And you can't go wrong with this, right? And I have bacon. So uh -huh. mashed potatoes, cheese, and bacon. You certainly can't go wrong with that. You just mix this all up. You put it in a baking dish that you've right sprayed, here. right? Mm -hmm. And then you bake it for about 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, because it's already cooked. Yeah, it'll all get ooey gooey and yummy. And then you bring it out of the oven. You put more cheese, more bacon, and green onions on it. On the top. It. And then you bake it for just like another three to five minutes. Well, oh, so that, that is nice. Melts. Oh, that's got a great texture. Doesn't that look delicious? Well, you know it's going to taste good. It's mashed potatoes, cheese, and bacon. I mean, I've mentioned before that when I go to a church supper, I usually just pig out on the vegetable dishes or the yeah the sides. Yeah, they're they're usually a little more creative, mm -hmm. you know, and not a huge meat eater. Where'd the other? Pork? Oh, here it is. But you got to taste it. Okay. I won't say no. That's for sure. Hmm. Is it delicious? Of course it is. There are no words. <laughs> Just mine? describe. Mm -hmm. I'll take a little it is delicious. Bite. What a wonderful combination of ingredients. Mm. Mm. It's we like a baked it. potato well, in a casserole. You don't have to mess with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. It tastes mm. like a good baked potato. That is delicious. So if you want to copy mm. this recipe, information's coming up on your screen, and uh, we'll we will be glad to get it out to you. But I. If you're going from 1 to 10, that's a at 10. least an 11. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Stay with us, and I want you to meet my guest, Travis. Stay here. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. My guest, Travis Waters, the author of West Coast Kid, My Redemption, a story that is going to be made into a movie. And as I went through your book, that's exactly what I thought. Welcome. Welcome to Home Thanks Keepers. for having me. I appreciate you having me here. Uh, boy, what a life you've had. Yes. Just a quick synopsis. Uh, we'll go back to the beginning, but how you can so be on a good track because you had you had a potential of being a professional basketball player. That was my goal, yes. And and, and you had the talent, and yes. it, it was looking good, and drugs yes. to go. But God takes this yucky stuff, and and um, he's using it for good now. Let's go yes. back to the beginning. You had a very, very sad childhood. Yes, well, my father was an alcoholic, abusive to my mother, and to me, and then my mother just couldn't take it anymore. And uh, she uh, had to do what she had to do to protect herself and her kids especially, mm -hmm. and he would either have killed her or she would have killed him, and she ended up, to get out of it, she had to shoot him, mm -hmm. and she shot him. And, and he did survive, but he that, survived, yes. that ended the marriage so that she could take you and protect. Yeah, her kids, me and my sisters, children. yes. But when I read of the brutality of the way he uh, treated you, the age of four. Yes. Uh, later on, we're going to talk more about drugs, but alcohol is a drug, and yes. um, he probably wouldn't have done that if he'd been sober. You no, think? he uh, 
it, that's you know it, it is basically like a drug because uh, when he would drink he would just be out of his mind basically and then he was sober he was you know loved me and, and cared about me and and alcohol ruled his life and he was just a totally different person mm -hmm. out of body and you were you were raised in Sunday school well I would go we would go to Sunday mm -hmm. school from a a, a gentleman that had a, a, a bus would come around and pick up the, the yeah. school, the kids around the neighborhoods, and I would go, yes. Yeah. Uh, you had your first joint at the age of, listen to me being groovy, joint, uh, <laughs> marijuana, yeah. at um, the age of 14? Yep, started cleaning <clears throat> boats that were loaded with marijuana and, and making money like that, yep. So, um, you, you didn't get this just running with a gang. You, were you involved in, in the drug, uh, selling the drugs at a very early age? No, I was just, no, I was playing ball and sports and I had older friends that would were smuggling marijuana into the country and we happened to live down by the water, by the ocean at the time and they would bring their boats back next door to my mother's house and I would clean their boats out and that's how I got experience in, in the drug business and started learning it that way. So it was kind of that never, out in the open? Yes, yeah, I never, it, down in South Florida it was back in the 70s and 80s. I would, that was never my goal was to be a drug smuggler. My goal was to play basketball, mm -hmm. scholarships, go to North Carolina and play pro ball. And I was playing all three sports when I was a kid in high school. I mm -hmm. chose one sport. And as you see in the book, Deion Sanders was my high school rival in, in basketball. But you you did get into the uh, drug dealing business yes. and it was huge. Yes, I was, I was actually, the, I was just a kid. I was 18, 19 years old, and that's where the name came about for us because kid was, I was given that name from the Cubans in the, uh, on the east coast of Florida that were bringing in loads, and that's how I got involved with them. And I had a cocaine business up north. I was running cocaine to a couple states, and I wanted more. You get, you know, you get in that lifestyle, and it's a rush. It was a rush for me. Well, was there ever any fear? Yeah, it's always in the back of your head that Is you know that, that, that you, get you, you can get caught. Yeah, and there's, uh, but you never know what you never know in the end what you're going to go through. Like, w w I got my punishment, but if you'd have told me I would have went through those things in prison that I wrote about in that book, I would never imagine that because you can't imagine that you know that, that you're going to be beaten up, sexually assaulted, and I don't want. That's why I want kids to see it. That's why I basically I wrote the book too for the kids because I said if I make it out of here alive in one of my beatings, if I make it out of here alive, I'll do everything I can to let kids know what's going to happen to them. What was the charge when you were put in prison? Importation of marijuana and cocaine trafficking. I had federal and state prison. I went to federal prison first, and I went transferred from there, finished that sentence, eight years sentence, 40 months, and I went to a state prison and had a 15-year, five-year minimum state sentence, and I finished out the rest of the sentence there. Altogether, I'd served six years and 10 days. Well, when you got out, was there any inclination all to go back to that? No, I had I, I had would, four, I, I, would had, hope. I had four four years parole, federal parole on top of that. Yeah. And so you've turned it around to help children, yes. young people. And I stuck to my promise. Fox yes. News. Um, Fox and Friends. Yes. Yeah, they, um, apparently they looked to you as an expert. Yes. And the thing that triggered, uh, I think you're being on Fox, was that when Colorado legalized marijuana, I'm not sure about Washington State at the same time, but that our president, uh, Barack Obama, made a statement about it that I don't know when I heard what he said, this was my interpretation, that it's really no big deal. Yes. What did you think? When I was on the Fox and Friends and I heard that, and they, that's why I was on there too to, to, to uh, dispute his comment, I was totally in shock that him being the president of the United States, a lot of the inner city kids look up to him and him to come out and say a statement basically giving the kids a green light that it's okay like for kids to smoke marijuana because he's, he says so. Basically that's how I read the comment mm -hmm. and I was in shock. I, I wonder what he was on when he would say something like that. Yeah and I, I think he has two lovely daughters. What would yes. he think if yeah. one of them you know took a drag well, on he, he did mention that he talked them about it and, and for them to stay away from it but I invited him I, I still, if he's watching watch this show, I invite him to come with, to me with some of these centers, alternative schools, and ask these kids themselves, what, that the ones that are, all, that are in recovery on marijuana addiction, and, and ask them what they think about his comment, because I've already had messages from them asking me, why would he come out and say something like that when he's the President of the United States? You know, I was born and raised in Colorado, and, and I, I just felt sick at my stomach that my home state, uh, because you know the grades are going to plummet. Oh, really? Uh, I don't understand anybody that would take something that's going to alter their thinking. I, I don't like to take yes. aspirin or anything. I don't want anything. Uh, if I have to take something, you know, I, I would. But 
I don't want anything that's going to alter my brain, yep. and I don't understand people who do this so I, easily. I have kids that have never smoked pot in their life told me the first time they smoked pot, they totaled their mother's car, ran straight through a stop sign, told their mother's car, the only car they had. And this is one of the kids that I'm referring to, to the president, what he said about marijuana is not that dangerous. And I also get into the big picture of marijuana. If I was smuggling marijuana today and you come to tell me that the state of Florida is going to legalize marijuana and take that market from me, me being a smuggler and all the smuggling friends I have in our circle, do you think that we would quit smuggling pot because you, you legalize it? It's going to be an epidemic of cocaine, heroin, crack, and meth in this country. I don't think everybody sees a big picture. All the non-smokers never smoked pot kids before are going to start smoking it. There's going to be two to three to five times overdosing on drugs because the drugs are going to be more powerful because there's going to be more competition to move it. When you have all these pot dealers, some smugglers, all the way down to 100 pound dealers, 1,000 pound dealers, to the growers in the other countries, down to the five and dime bag street dealers. Whoa. What do you think, figure out all those around the country and the world, what mm -hmm. do you think they're going to do when marijuana is legal? They're going to, it's, it's going to be an epidemic of cocaine, crack, heroin, meth labs popping up all over. And, and that's what they that's what they need to see instead of so worrying that, about. So that's what the smugglers would do. They just and get pot the dealers, and, and and then and then they're sitting there thinking that they're going to make the money off the marijuana, off the off the and, and slow down the prisons, uh, eliminate some of the prison sentences because marijuana. They're putting people in prison for marijuana mm -hmm. and all this stuff like that. Well, well, you can forget about all that money making because how much money are you going to spend on all the new cocaine, crack, meth? Uh, uh, and heroin dealers that are going to be busted because those sentences are twice as long as a pot sentence. So it doesn't you're, make sense to me. You're basically saying, though, that, and I've heard people argue about it on TV, but the experts always say that marijuana is a gateway drug. It is. It, it's no doubt it's a gateway drug because, especially if it's legal to kids that never intended to smoke anyway, but if it's legal, they're going to think it's cool and it's okay to do it when you have the President of the United States out there saying it's not that dangerous. And, and it's a gateway to cocaine, heroin, crack, and meth. Especially if you make it legal, if you make it legal for recreational use, kids that I talk to, and, and my experience with these kids when I go visit these places, mm -hmm. is that's that's just going to be an illegal drug. They'd rather do a drug that's going to be legal. So what are they going to do when they stop when they start smoking pot? They're going to start doing the drugs that are, that are illegal even more. Now, who do you go to, who do you go talk to? I know um, youth groups, youth co-op centers, high schools, alternative schools. And you you tell them their story, and do they? They, they read my book. My books. My books are number one read book in high schools that it's available in. Uh, I want it in all, all the high schools around the country. Treatment centers. That's my goal. And, and I'm the working book on we're the, talking about is West Coast Kid, My Redeemer. My and redemption. Redemption. I'm sorry. And it's by Travis Waters. Um, it's also <laughs> mandatory reads. It's yearly reads at centers. Yes. Do kids uh, come and tell you their little story? Because I've read some maybe from a parent and one from a, a young a kind of a testimonial as, as to how you were able to uh, reach them yes and turn them around because you're the pro uh i never thought that my story would have this impact that it has mm -hmm. on kids around the country and adults i've had parents that send me emails and messages because you can contact me through my website mm -hmm. that they would message me and tell me that that they made their son or daughter read, read my book and they're thanking me that I, used, I get a lot of emails that they change their lives around, they're back in school making A's and B's, they stop smoking pot, stop doing drugs, but mm -hmm. when I get the emails that tells me that they, they saved their son's life, that they can never repay me for that, and mm -hmm. God, God bless me for that, mm -hmm. and then uh, even kids that tried, to, that tried to, to OD on drugs that sent me a message from them themselves telling me that my book saved their life, I God couldn't sleep for good. a couple of days for mm -hmm. that because I thought, mm -hmm. I have something so powerful in my hand that I have to get it out there. It, it has to be in every school and every treatment center in the country. That it's actually, it's, and I looked at my book when I got that message and I looked at it and go, it's, this kid's telling me, I wonder what he looks like. Cause he's telling mm -hmm. me I saved his life. We've got your website up. We're gonna keep it up uh, for the rest of the program. Um, did your mom have any idea you were smoking pot? She, she knew that, she knew I was running around the wrong people and she cried all the time about it. Yes, mm -hmm. she would cry all the time about it. And she uh, knew that I, threw all my, I was throwing my life away. You also, um, give ideas to parents as to how to talk to uh, every psychological expert those who deal with children also the parents have the power you know to influence they're the number one influencers in a child's life and i just wonder what the percentage is of parents of teenagers and younger in this united states of america who ever talk to their kids about anything right. even if they're not sure exactly what they're supposed to say the best the best 
advice that I could give them is you, 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 the kids tell me when their parents yell at them about this and get on them and harp on them about it, uh -huh. that's, they, 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 uh, they want to do it more. They rebel against yeah. that. You got to set them down and talk to them that I'm telling you this for a reason. I love you. I, I've, I ran into, I've had this experience when I was in high school on drugs, the pressure from doing drugs. And you got to explain to them and tell them what it's really going to do to you, what's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. If you yell at them and make them mad, they, they do it more and they don't want to talk to you. Near you you got to treat them, you got to treat them like, you got to treat them and, and tell them how much you love them and why you're telling them. That's uh, human nature. Yes. You know, if somebody tells you not to do something in a very firm right. way, then yeah, they're going to, they that's more. exactly what they're going to do. Um, Okay, let's talk a little bit about marijuana. You say it affects the part of brain that controls memory, attention, learning, and and to perform a task that's more than one or two steps. Right, their motor skills. Most most teenagers, the brain development is 25 years old, and the kids are smoking pot 16, 17 years old. Their, their frontal lobes of their brains not even developed all the way. Mm. And marijuana, and marijuana, it, it, it limits your motor skills right off the bat your thinking, your appetite, it does everything to you. And, and also the, the, the picture is too that I'm seeing that I, I never hear a lot of the people talk on TV about the, the health issues that's gonna come with marijuana in 10 or 15, 20 years of smoking marijuana. And you know they say, another, another thing that gets me when these groups advocates say, oh no one's ever OD'd on marijuana. Well how many times do you think that kids have gotten in car wrecks like the kid I mentioned earlier running through the stop sign that told his mother's only car there on a limited budget because mm -hmm. he smoked, never smoked pot in his life, smoked some. One time some, wrecked his one, mother's where, car. And, and marijuana is so much powerful now than it was 25 years ago. So I couldn't imagine a kid smoking a pot now and then driving a car, and but it, it don't kill you. You might not OD on drugs, but you're gonna OD, you're gonna kill somebody in that car and kill somebody else in that other car that you ran head on to because you're stoned out of your mind. You say that um, one joint can deliver four times as much cancer-causing tar as it does as yes, uh, yes. tobacco. And uh, they're so powerful. The pot is now. They're also, that uh, why is it more powerful now? The the this genetically, uh, genetically modified with mm -hmm. the growing techniques they have now. The THC levels is, is, and they even have marijuana now in, in THC liquid form. They say that, that that it can knock you basically out when you smoke it if you never smoked that before. It's 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 oil, mm -hmm. just straight THC like 100% oil. It, it's just the way they grow it now with all the technology they have, and they gen they genetically modify it. It's nothing like the pot when we were kids, and, and I, I, that's why I couldn't imagine why you would even they would even consider states even condoning wanting to legalize marijuana. I know it, 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 it's mind-boggling to me. And, and like I said, and, and they, they want to talk about how much money they're going to save by doing it. And they're going to send, they're going to spend, they're going to spend billions more on hospitals, treatment centers, arrest, mm -hmm. police records, all that on cocaine, crack, and meth, all the new dealers and, and users are going to be of that. Well, this is just a sidebar, but last night I saw this guy on TV extolling the fact that someplace in Canada now they can pay 25 cents for a crack pipe. And the government's paying for this. The world's nuts, okay? Now, uh, from, from the um, marijuana, a lot of times they move to crack. And you say that uh, it causes a lot of depression and three times more likely to have suicidal thoughts and increased risk, risk for schizophrenia in later years. Boy, that is sobering. Yes, and, and uh, I agree with all that. And, and, and it's, that's what's going to happen to them. You had a, an experience with crack as well. No, not with crack, with just marijuana and cocaine, yes. Okay, is crack different than cocaine? Cocaine, they make crack with cocaine. Crack is a cheaper form of cocaine. And is crack the ultimate Crack strength? is more addictive than cocaine, actually, yes. Yeah, now there's... There's, there's all kind of derivatives in it Kind of a blissful it. high to it. Yep. How long does that last? A, a couple hours, depending how powerful it is, and that's why when I went back to cocaine, crack, and meth, how many more overdoses are going to be because of marijuana is legal is because of the drugs are going to be more powerful because when you have more of anything on the street, there's more competition to move it. So whoever has the best drugs is going to what? Going to sell more. So the kids are going to be the ones suffering and ODing more, ODing more and dying. You know, it's... Like with the actor, uh, F Philip Seymour, mm -hmm. of, co of heroin. Not too long ago. Yep, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. And it's so, it's so sad that it can so take you over like that, that, that that's... Mm -hmm. The only thing that counts in life is yes. to get that next, that next. Um, but we do get a lot of, um, you know, 
experts saying that marijuana is not a gateway drug, but every expert I've ever talked to says it is. From David Wilkerson, who kind of started the the drug rehab yes. thing uh, decades ago, yeah, to I, you. I hear that too, and, and I argue that point a lot. I have people that, that friends that before that smoke pot, cocaine, and, and, do, and do, do all kind of hard drugs, pills. They still don't. They just they don't stop smoking pot. That's that's what people don't understand. It, it leads them to smoking other things. They smoke. They do the cocaine. They use the pot to come off the cocaine, just like they do Xanax pills, or they do crack. They use pills to come down because it's an upper and a downer. They don't quit smoking pot just because they it's the, it's the gateway to harder drugs. And that's what people don't understand. They don't just mm -hmm. stop smoking pot. They keep smoking pot. Just don't do it. <laughs> Stay away from it. Run as fast. Read my book. Run as fast Run as you as can. Run as fast as you the can. The other way. And. Um, we are we're just about to uh, run out of time, but uh, you also talk about alcohol and um, prescription drugs. Yes. I don't know why life is so bad that y you know you're living in a free country, you've got all kinds of opportunity, but you need to medicate this brain all the time. No, I don't get it. Like, I, I, and I agree with that because I when I got that message about the, the kid himself telling me I saved his life. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I was thinking, what, what do you, I wonder what he looked like, like I said, and I wonder what, how is this life so bad? I know that he's hooked on drugs and, and mm -hmm. he's in recovery, but how is your life so bad that you would risk to keep taking it so it does kill you? And then, thank God, my book saved his life, and I just, I couldn't sleep for a couple of days when I got that message, thinking about that. that well, thank God I, that I, I could help him. You had, a, you had a tragic childhood which kind of, you know, leads you um, into situations that are, well, to put it lightly, not real wholesome, but even with your history, you know, and the smuggling and, and the jail and all, that God takes all that stuff and He uses it for good. Yeah. And um, I'm thankful for any group that you can get in front of and yes. talk and educate. Yes. They, they can contact me. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed that I'm in this position. Like I said, I prayed a lot. I'm mm -hmm. here because of a reason. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm very thankful and very blessed that I am here to do that and, and save people's lives and change lives. Uh, I feel like it's my duty now that I, you know I've had. I pray. I that's got what got me through prison was my faith. The only thing I had. I agree. Yeah, it can go the with only you anywhere. Thing I had, go with you. You can't lock it out. Uh, it's nothing you can't yeah. do. Thank you for coming. We're, Thank you for we are me. out of time, but I like to use this program to just give you all the information you can, and uh, do the best you can with your kids and your grandkids, and pray for them and until you're just worn out and God will see you through. Please join me next time. Remembering, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 